Some say that gentlemen never sail to windward. If that's the case, then there are no gentlemen on Esper. Because for the next 100 miles or so, we'd be doing just that in varying degrees of discomfort and difficulty, and mostly with the engine on. You may be wondering why on earth we'd put ourselves in this ridiculous situation. Well, it certainly wasn't our choice. Circumstances have conspired against us to mean that our only option was to get to Lombok. One, before our visas ran out every day we overstayed was costing a million rupiah each, and two, to find somewhere to haul the boat. That engine rattle wasn't getting any better. But back to the epigram. Does never sailing to windward also mean that cyclists only do it downhill? We quite like sailing to windward. Sometimes. Se a casa está vazia um dia Também vou ficar E te ver crescer Me faz tão feliz saber que você É você quite a few days at this anchorage uh, there's a bit of a lull in the weather it's a bit sketchy at least we were saying earlier it's quite difficult for them to get precise forecast here but uh, what we're looking at is uh, just a break in the in the wind and uh, so we're just going to go for it uh, it will pick up during the night uh, so we may actually end up having to change course by the way excuse my nose I don't know why this has happened I put sunblock on it every day I must have just done a day of nose no sunblock, but uh, anyway, we're just going to give it a go. Let's see what happens, yeah? Okay. I just thought I'd put in context and explain the situation and why we were at anchor there for five days. By the way, we didn't do anything except hide from bad weather when we were there. We didn't even go ashore to the island. Uh, the weather wasn't really permissible. We were sitting out, um, strong winds coming up the Malacca Sea. Now the reason for this is because we're in the southeast monsoon. The southeast actually runs across the Flores Sea, across the Java Sea, and uh, will provide hopefully a good run from uh, the bottom of Sulawesi all the way to Lombok. Hopefully it should be sailing. But I always knew that this little bit here from the edge of these islands down to the next step across the Malacca Sea was going to be difficult. And that is because the southeasterly monsoon curves up I've been monitoring the weather for, well, for the last two months and I noticed that on the whole the wind does blow up, meaning it's going to be wind on the nose for this particular trip. And every now and then you get a little lull, you might get a 24 hour window. So when we last tried to leave, I stupidly thought that we would be able to sail close to the wind. Well, as you saw, it wasn't, um, didn't quite work out that way. Uh, this time, hopefully, uh, although we've got wind, a bit of wind on the nose, we can barely get that stay sail out. Uh, the seas are a lot flatter and I'm hoping that uh, with a bit of motor sailing we should be able to make this trip, get down to the protection of the islands at the bottom of the Malacca Sea and uh, from there, uh, well the next 50 odd miles is actually in between islands so we should be protected. After that we then have the sea and the winds uh, to our advantage. We've spent five days at Pula Buntu after that horrendous attempt to try and go south. We had a good two solid days of dreadful weather there, followed by a third day of averagely bad weather. It rained a lot. Um, yesterday it started to look a little better and we made a plan that we would leave first thing this morning with an overnight windy and predict wind both said no lots of wind coming your way but we looked out the window couldn't see much rain and basically the south east wind is coming this way all the time. Uh, sometimes it veers around to the southwest, sometimes it's southerly, sometimes it's strong and sometimes it's not strong. So basically we've got to go at some point with the wind against us. So we reckon that there wasn't too much this morning so we would just go and we'll make as far south as we can uh, until if we get some big wave build-ups or, or, or the winds are straight at us and slowing us right down then we'll tack, well tack, we're not even sailing, we're motor sailing then we'll head 
uh, west will go towards the coastline where there is a lot less wind and it might mean we can get a sail in because we should have the wind on the beam uh, but we just want to get south as far as we can and if necessary we'll just hug the coastal bay all the way around doing day hops but it's really nice to be out of there the only thing i really regret is that we didn't make it ashore it just wasn't it wasn't it just wasn't going to happen with the dinghy and the weather and everything because it looked really beautiful the island jamie managed to put the drone up um, but it could have been um, a very interesting place to explore but to be honest today was probably the day to do it and we had to go never mind Unfortunately, had to put the stay sail away uh, because we are steering off course. There is quite a strong current coming across our beam from the west. It's hitting 1.7 knots. Uh, it's just behind us, so it's helping us move forward. Uh, but what it does mean is we're steering a good 30 degrees off course, so we're steering more into the wind. Uh, so it's kind of like a, a six of one, half dozen the other, really. Can't sail, but we've got a little bit of current helping us, so that's good. A um, bit of weather building up over there. That is actually south. That's roughly where we're aiming, although we are heading that way at the moment because of that current. We are expecting a little bit of uh, heavier wind probably uh, during the night. So uh, we are going to be prepared for that. And then hopefully it will die down sometime uh, sort of two o'clock in the morning. And we'll just have to carry on motoring. But uh, I don't think there's going to be any good wind to get the uh, sails out properly and actually turn the engine off unfortunately but you never know we'll see what happens by the way that island which you might be able to see uh, is very interesting I'm going to put an overlay over the top of this to show you it's an island with a complete it's like a moat of uh, water all the way around it and then a reef around that so it's like a big ring uh, it, took us, it took us ages to work out how boats get in and out but we think we found the channel I don't think it would be deep enough for us to duck into, not that we want to, but uh, it's a fascinating looking island. And it is the island farthest south of this group of islands here. So this is literally the last bit of land uh, before the uh, jump across the Molucca Sea. past that island now and the big reef which uh, we could see breaking waves over the top of and uh, basically I've set the waypoint to our next destination so we're steering straight to it and just able to get the stay sail out and keep it inflated so uh, that's helping balance the boat a little bit and uh, you can see we've got quite a swell here it's a good I don't know meter and a half occasionally two but uh, if it stays like this, that's okay. But if the wind comes around and we can get some sailing in, even better. But, uh, you know, at least we are actually aiming for our next waypoint rather than having to steer off of it. We can see we're having fun and games with a booby. Last time we saw boobies was in the Indian Ocean and Liz managed to catch one on her fishing line, believe it or not. Um, we haven't seen them since and yet here they are today. We think this guy is obviously tired, he wants a rest. He's welcome to stay on Esper but just not on top of our mast. He, he's been circling us now for about 10 minutes and he keeps trying to land but of course, you know, the mast is moving in the swell so he can't get a purchase, poor bloke.
morning. Oh, that was a long night. Hopefully we're only going to do one night, let's hope. Uh, it just seemed to take a long, 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 long time. We both stayed up in the cockpit, just having an hour or so kit and letting the other one watch. The advantage we were just saying was that there were no fishing platforms, no FADs, nothing like that. And we think that is because this is such a horrible bay to go across. Certainly nobody in their right mind would go north to south because you've either got the southeast or the southwest coming at you, both in the form of waves and wind. So we were right to leave when we did because this is relatively flat compared to what it could be like. Um, we've had to alter course slightly because the waves were a little bit too much. So we're going slightly further east than we had originally intended, but it's it will have got us when we get there across this bay, this Sulawesi version of the Bay of Biscay. What did you think of it? I'll talk a bit more about the uh, passage itself once we've dropped the hook. Uh, but we're just now coming into this atoll. It's a very big atoll. Uh, there are three or four islands on the east side and we're hoping that we can drop the hook in between a couple of the islands just for the night, just to catch our breath before pushing on. Uh, the whole of this area is, well we're now in 29 metres. Uh, up until that point it was 400 metres and then obviously 2,000 metres. The other thing you'll notice is how flat the sea is. It's still a little bit lumpy but it's nothing compared to what it's like outside the atoll. So uh, and we've even picked up some speed as well. We're actually doing over four knots which is the first time I think I've seen the number four for the whole of this morning. So I realised I didn't give you my analysis of the last 27 hours. We got here, we were so exhausted that uh, I quickly filled up the jerry cans and then we've just been sort of lying in the cockpit for the rest of the afternoon. But I thought I'd do it now, just as the sun is setting. This is this uh, little sort of atoll with these three islands, one there and then these two here. And it's, the sun's going down you can just see, look at all these fishermen out here. So really the only way I can describe the last 27 hours was quite possibly the most joyless passage we have ever done. It was horrible. Everything conspired against us. I think I did say actually that uh, I knew that it was going to be bad, it was going to be difficult. If you remember when we uh, left in the sort of late morning we had that swell and although it was quite a big swell it was a gentle swell and Esper was coping with that just fine. Uh, we had current with us and there was a little bit of wind but not too much. Well that all changed after the sun went down. The current changed direction so we were fighting current for the entire crossing. Uh, the sea state just got really sloppy and that was partly because of the current and because of the waves that were being blown up into the bay from all those uh, previous southeasterlies that had been blowing over the last week. And for the first half we got a little bit of wind so we were able to motor sail with the sails. But when we got halfway down the wind just kept creeping around and creeping around and we had to have the sails out even though we were motoring just to make any kind of progress. So we bared away, uh, tried to keep the sails uh, just filled a little just to make that progress. But um, it was 97 miles and we averaged 3.6 knots, which gives you some idea of what a crappy passage it was. So yeah, just very long and drawn out really. Nothing exciting happened. Uh, didn't see any boats until this morning. And that is because no one is stupid enough to cross that bay, not in the direction we went. So if ever you find yourselves in this neck of the woods, uh, I would try and avoid it if you can. It's another long one today. 
we're actually doing what we should have done in one go last time. It's about 46 miles to the next anchorage. Now, the issue is the sea state. Uh, the winds this far into land, uh, well, they're fairly benign. I mean, they hit sort of 15 knots. Out there, it's blowing 25 knots, and that's creating this swell. Um, unfortunately, it's on the nose, so at the moment, we're just plowing through with no sail out. I'm kind of hoping that this southeasterly swell subsides the further down we go, but uh, we'll find out. We are hitting four knots though, which is good. There's not much current against us at the moment, but as you can see, it's a pretty bouncy journey. So yeah, we just, um, just have to see how it goes. How many times have I said that lately? Just see how it goes. I was going to come up to the front of the boat and do a piece to camera with our head sail out but unfortunately we've just lost the wind so we've had to put it away. But what you will notice compared to the footage I took first thing this morning is how things have calmed down a little at least for the moment. Uh, we still have this swell but you can see that uh, it's a lot flatter. What you pr probably can also see is <clears throat> the build up of cloud all the way around. So out to sea we've got that northeasterly blowing probably blowing in some squalls and um, we know from weather forecast on land that there's quite a bit of squalls building up. The main thing Liz and I were just, to, just talking about was this swell and of course for the last however many hundreds of miles we've been having to motor into it. Now once we get down to Bao Bao, which is the next major port hopefully by then not only will we start sailing but we should also of course be running with the swell rather than against it which will be a welcome relief what i'm hoping is that after today's anchorage there's just one more 20 mile hop with a gap in the middle which might allow a bit of uh, swell to come in but uh, hopefully after tonight that should be it that's the uh, the end of this um, uncomfortable swell and uh, hopefully some more favorable winds to start sailing again beautiful day lovely it's also probably hopefully the last leg of this section of our passage to Lombok which takes us towards the Bhutan Strait. De getting from the very northeast at Lembe all the way down this far has been I have to say a really hard slog because the wind and more importantly the waves and the swell have been against us the entire way there's nothing we could have done about that so we've had to stop when they've been too much because we can get nowhere but um, so some delays have happened but today is okay so far we've got very little wind so we have to motor sail but at least the swell isn't stopping us because when we get enough wind it's either straight on the nose which is hopeless or it's so strong it, the swell is just untenable and we can't get through it so <laughs> it's been a you know, it's been one of those strange situations, but at least we're looking, it looks like the end is soon going to happen to this leg of the journey and we'll be getting into the Bhutan Strait, which is just a flat, nice, simple strait. And then at that point we leave and we head west towards Lombok, in which case this nasty swell will suddenly be on our side, taking us the way we want to go. But today is today, We've got to get to our next anchorage get the anchor down and probably have to deal with a couple of squalls that we can see in front of us at the moment. I tried to get a shot of the uh, tug and tow behind me but it's very difficult because we've still got this swell. We keep thinking at what point are we going to get uh, the protection of Waromi Island which is the island we're aiming at. When are we going to get into the lee of it? Well it's not going to be yet unfortunately so it does mean trying to shoot footage of passing tugs is very difficult but it's interesting watching this tug he's doing two knots he's running with the swell but he's going against the current and obviously for us it's vice versa it's quite interesting seeing the uh, swell smash up against his toe there patience of a saint eh? I don't think I could do that job What a 
beautiful little spot, eh? Just thought I'd capture this just as we get the last of the sunlight for the day. You did just miss a very funny moment. It could have been quite dangerous. A local fisherman with his wife out for an afternoon cruise came straight across the front of Esper. They always do this, it's curiosity mainly. And just as he got to the front of us, his engine cut out. If I hadn't have spotted it, he would have been, uh, would have been a goner. The, sh the look of panic on his face was quite amusing. And uh, he was busily trying to start his outboard, but uh, fortunately I had spotted him, gave him a nice wave. I think he was a bit embarrassed. So uh, yeah, we can't anchor over there. Apparently this was a bomb practice area. There could be mines here still. So there's a, an area we've got to avoid. A couple of shallow patches according to the charts, which aren't on, sorry, on the satellite, which aren't on the charts. And then a little reef over there, but we're going to anchor just somewhere there. Beautiful, eh? Just so good to be out of that bloody swell.